Wakey wakey hand off snakey. Today we are going diving. I'm gonna pick Buster up. He lives about two houses away from me. I'm still gonna drive there and pick him up. <laughs> and we're going diving. Beautiful winter's day today. Uh, it is a bit cold this morning, but that's not gonna stop us. We're gonna steam up the coast a bit and go in and try and get some food, maybe some slipper lobsters. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll tell you that when we get there anyway. See you when we get there. Ew. Hey, Mr. 11 kilo kingfish. Right. We're gonna get one today. So. so if you see a big kingfish, make sure you call me out first. It's my oh, time. Yeah. Rocked up to our spot. Looks pretty clear. It's not that windy yet. And it looks so blue, but we're still gonna fly the drone just to check the viz because there was a big swell recently. So it's a pretty good idea we could because I have the drone. We'll fly the drone out to where we're gonna dive and just see if it's clear or not. Even if it's murky, we'll probably still go out, so there's probably no point, but we can get some good footage. And by the looks of it, it looks pretty clear. Black lip wetsuits keeping me warm again. Cheers for the spot, legends. Much appreciated. About to head out. Still looks good, and we're keen. What do you reckon target species today, Buster? Uh, Spanish mac. <laughs> no, <laughs> kingies. Maybe a Spanish mackerel, yeah. So I know a slipper lobster hole out there, so maybe I'll be able to get out there, get a slipper lobster. Thanks, Odin, for the tips. <laughs> and yeah, fish wise, hopefully a couple blue moeys, maybe. Yeah, maybe a snapper, maybe a kingy if we're really lucky. We always say that, we never get it. <laughs> Speak for, for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so we'll see you in the water. Heel. Just got in from our half an hour dive. We did not last out long because it was pretty murky because we had a big swell before and yeah, pretty murky. We did end up getting, I got two fish. Some call me the Mormon King. I got a red, he'd be about 40 centimeters and a blue Mormon, about 30 centimeters. He's really small, but they, like I said in my Q and A, favorite fish, I can never pass up. I did see probably like, it would have, at least 60 centimeter one of these guys and he just darted as soon as he saw me but i don't know what i'll do i might do a comparison between the red and blue they're both good eating fish and just see which one i like more because i've never had them both at the same time who knows but good day out in the water better than sitting at home even though it was murky we didn't, didn't last long but i'm used to not lasting long <laughs> <laughs> all right guys i'm down the river i'm about to cook up my fish that i left in the fridge so I'm gonna have to go home and get it and come back down here seeing how did I do that <laughs> 
take two. Picked up my fish, picked up some boards as well. I didn't bring any boards down, so I would have had trouble then. It's probably a good thing I forgot the fish. Um, what else do I bring? Yep, so got my two more wong, red or blue. Which one's it going to be? We'll see in a bit. Oh, I love down here. My favourite place. Down along the river. There's just no one else. I just love it. Someone will probably come along today, seeing as I said that. Oh, it's pretty clear today. So I brought the gas cooker. I was going to have a fire, but I thought, no, the gas cooker would just be easier. And we'll get started. So I need to fill up the fish. I've done no preparation for the fish whatsoever because I want to do a full catch clean cook episode today. And I'll start filleting them and I'll show you how I fill up them. I know people are going to be in the comments and be like, you're doing it wrong. I don't care how anyone does their fish because this is the way I do it. Everyone does it differently. Whatever way works for you is the best way to do it. If you get most of the meat off the fish, you're doing a good job. So I'll fill up the red mall one first. How I do it. It's pretty simple. A lot of people probably do it this way, but a lot of people probably do it differently. I go against that bone there and that the meat from this side of what the the gills really and the head, that's all meat through there. Cut down there, flip it around, and then I go along the backbone so I can feel the bone hitting the knife and I just, this is just the first bit for me, just to get the cut kind of separated from the backbone. So I'm going along the backbone now and I can feel the knife hitting the backbone and separating the meat from the backbone. You just cut through that big bone there. And then the meat goes down a bit into the rib cage. So you want to follow the rib cage and the backbone all the way back. So you still just want to be along that backbone. You don't want your knife to be above the backbone and losing some meat. It's still along the backbone, all the way to the end. So some people, this is where some people separate, oh, I just saved it. So some people separate the the skin from the fillet there, but oh, it's basically separated. So I'll do it anyway. And then to skin them, I first thing I do is actually take the rib cage out because I find skinning it for me with the rib cage in, which is a part you don't need anyway, makes it more difficult than it has to be. So I'll take that out first. That's for the fishies because you don't eat that part. But that would, would be good bait if you want to use it. So to get the skin off now, you just want to put your knife in the back and go along the skin. And most fish, because they got the scales on still, it's pretty easy to skin them. Just go a bit further, now you've got a good grip of the skin. And you want to kind of wiggle your knife and the skin at the same time. If you just start cutting, the knife will cut the skin. There's the skin off. Not much meat left on there. That's for the fishies. There's your fillet. So there are a few more bones in when you've done that. You've got the back bones here. You want to just do a little cut to get those guys out. And there is a beautiful red mormon fillet. So some people would cut that blood out. I don't mind it though. I reckon that's just not as good as the white flesh, but it's still perfectly edible. It's a perfect fillet. So I'll do the rest and then we'll start cooking. So I've got four beautiful Mormong fillets, the bigger ones, the red Mormong, the smaller ones, and I feel like they're softer. They are the blue Mormong fillets, so I'm just going to wash them off in the river, get all the gunk and the scales and the stuff off that it needs to come off, and then they'll be ready to cook. Four clean, ready to go Mormong fillets. Yum. I'm going to cook one fillet of each of the Mormongs one way, 
and then one fillet of each of the morgues another way, just to kind of get a full taste test kind. I don't want to be based on just breadcrumbs, and you guys who follow on my Instagram will know that that's all I cook when I'm having dinner. Okay, so that's a big red morgue fillet. And that is a blue morgue fillet right there. I'm just gonna put a bit of salt and pepper on each of the fillets. Add a bit of flavor. Then I'm gonna add some herb and garlic seasoning that I've had for ages. It's probably the last time I use it. That stuff's really nice, but. We'll add some lemon. Most unorthodox way of squeezing lemon ever. <laughs> and heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps of butter. Love my butter. There we go. Chuck that on. That'll cook while I'm doing this one. So I need some breadcrumbs, salt and pepper, Mix that around. I feel like a chef doing this. Chuck one fillet in. So a lot of people do egg first, then I think they do like flour or flour, then egg, then breadcrumbs. I actually prefer just going straight to breadcrumbs. I reckon it sticks enough and it's just as tasty. So each their own butt. So that's basically it for the second fillets. This will cook for a bit. You can already hear it cooking. And the heat's kind of getting trapped inside the foil. <laughs> I can't burn myself again on the foil. So that is definitely ready. Second one, we want this to be quick so we can take both at the same time. Bit of oil. That's already going to be hot because the pan was so hot. Oh, she's already boiling. Damn. Second fillet. Whoa. Straight in. She's boiling. I'll leave the foil on for a bit just to keep that warm. What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> How is it already golden brown? What the hell? That was legit 10 seconds. It's a bit loud, but the blue molong definitely ready. Ow. Oh shit. Oh shit. All right. I left it on for a bit too long. <laughs> oh no. Oh damn it. Oh damn it. A little bit, a little bit crispy. Just a little bit. That red molong is ready. Oh my god. This is a piece and a half. Taste test time. So I'm glad that I did it two ways because I overcooked the blue molong a little bit with the battered. Mm. That's red mong just then. So the crumbed red mong is absolutely delicious. So I'll just find a bit of blue mong. So that's blue mong there. Tiny bit overcooked, but fish. Mm, that is still so good. I actually don't know which one I like better. Here we go, okay, the baked. I probably should have ate that first. It's probably not gonna be the too hot. Oh, that's warm as. Blue Molong, mmm. That is just so good. There's just no fishy flavor whatsoever. Go the red Molong now. Oh, actually, I can taste the difference. 
Alright, I've come to conclusion. Both delicious fish. They are just genuinely top quality table fish. Blue Mawong is slightly better, I'll give it that. There's just a tiny, tiny bit of fishy flavour with the red Mawong, but serious, compared to other fish, absolutely nothing. But compared to the blue Mawong, you can just taste a tiny bit of a difference. But if I wasn't eating these right next to each other, I'd give them both 10 out of 10s. They are both delicious. Thanks for watching another episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Blue wins this round, blue Mawong. But who knows? Maybe I like red Mawong cooked a different way. They're both delicious fish, but yeah, blue. Definitely still my favorite fish to spear and catch and to eat. So I probably maybe was a bit biased. Who knows? Anyway, I'll see you next time. You Merch coming soon. Coming soon. Could I leave this here for five minutes while I go home? I reckon I'll be all right with it. I'm going to quickly go home. Come back here. <laughs> I'm dumb sometimes.